I'm not running. We the people are running. We're not running anymore. We are not. We're, we're, we are. We are not excited. We are energized. Someone can say, "Hey, I got a brand new car for you." You all right? Across the street. Oh yeah, I'm okay. You know, and you get so excited, run across the street and get hit by a car trying to run to your new car. That's how they control the black community through emotions. They get us excited. We're so excited, but then for 400 years, change doesn't truly happen. Right? And so I'm packing all this, you know. He's saying, I don't have all the pieces of the puzzle. That doesn't mean I can't talk, right? And this is also challenging the experts, right? Say, well, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a this, I'm not a mechanic, I'm not a that. It's a no, but if you're smart, you can tell. You fucker. Right? If you're smart, what kind of sick you can judge things when it comes to people. You know, you can see, you know, if, you're, if it's a doctor, you can get a second opinion before you have some major surgery or make a major health decision. If it's a mechanic, you can get a second opinion, a second quote, see who's more trustworthy, see if it's worth paying more uh, to a more credible body shop or not, or if they're lying to you. Right? You don't always have to be perfect before you can speak. You don't always have to work on yourself with self-help stuff before you can do something. You can do stuff and then get I respect and validation from the um, the credit you get from doing stuff. Yourself. Not think yes, you're such a mess that okay. you can't do stuff. Marla, look at me. Right? I really he says, okay. I'm not running, I'm walking. Uh, we're not running. Trust we're me. not excited. We are energized. I and he says, primitive lizard part of our brain, there's two things that are simulated, sex and violence, right? Or sex and death, right? Those are the two things, right? If you just hear the word sex, you react to it. Sex, ah, where is it? What is it? Can I get some? Whatever, right? It stimulates it. Or if you hear death, ah, death, who died? Am I gonna die, right? It stimulates your brain, right? So these are things that they use to stimulate our emotions. And so Kanye is, is referring in some ways to the fact that when they get us all exci excited and emotional, they, they make us easier to control. Talking fight club. Better than the stress of saying less of like this. Mother! You hit me in the ear! Well, Jesus, I'm sorry. Ow! Why the ear, man? Oh, God. Get up. Oh, that was perfect. Black zombies, black zombies, Hispanic zombies, you name it, just everybody zomboing. Zomboing bad. Gentlemen, we can all get tired of the fight. First rule of the fight club is fight club. you do not talk about fight Gentlemen, club. Gentlemen, second rule of the fight club is talking fight club. You do not talk about fight club. Gentlemen, fight club. First rule of the fight club, fight club. Fight club. is you do not talk about I talk about fight club. Gentlemen, second rule of fight club is talking fight club. You do not talk about fight club. I've been raised on television to believe that one day we'd all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars. Not a devil worship problem. But we learned from that fact. Not a punk problem. We're very, very pissed off. God has already started the healing. This conversation alone is healing and revealing. We all need to start praying and kneeling, dot, dot, dot. Another bar after that. But when a rhyme comes together, I'm gonna to complete it. I'm not inside the lines created by organizations that we know as reality. The schools, the infrastructure that was made for us to not truly be all we can be, but to be just good enough to work for the corporations that designed the school systems. We're tearing that up. What we'll do is we're not gonna tear up the constitution. What we will do is amend, right? So. He's going on about God, as I mentioned earlier. You know, they're trying to create an atheistic, communistic culture. So the government is God. There's no God saying, no, nah, God wouldn't like it. I'm not going to do that. It's just the government saying, we're your God. You're going to do that, even if it's bad, right? Um, and, um, and he's talking about rhyming, you know, not inside the lines created by organizations that we know is our reality, right? Because institutions do define our reality, right? This is where we learn certain things. A lot of times people aren't, aren't, aren't stupid. They're just smart about what they know. 
if if we make sure you know men make sure people respect each other you know other men do women kids whatever everyone's looking for a man to make sure right you know, i've done it myself filmed it myself and, you know anywhere everywhere whatever right and you know so people are usually a lot happier when it's like okay that's what we're gonna do respect each other not worry about us you know acting sketchy you know worked up spazzing out touching our head face shoving things in our mouth or running and bothering and biting people cool then great we can politely look at acknowledge each other we can see how people feel they can see how we feel we can mind our business or we look at each other not worry about it right then you can tell how people feel you can see their vibe their body language their facial expressions and you can understand people and you can act appropriately or speak appropriately when it comes to that right um but otherwise um uh, if we do that then we can talk about the different things we know as people who respect each other and evolve our understanding and our opinions if we don't if we're turning to the same commie zombie and if you're not a commie zombie then you must be a nazi if you don't all think hear and say and do the exact same things then you must be a nazi um so you know uh you know then then, then that's the problem right um and then the schools the infrastructure made for us not to truly be all we can be but just be good enough to work for corporations that design, uh, that design the school systems and we're not going to tear up the constitution we'll amend it right well basically yeah the, the education system right was created to control people and create corporate clones right like uh, pink floyd's another brick in the wall all in all you're just a, another brick in the wall we don't need no education we don't need no full control right we got a battle against that before you were homeschooled you had one parent typically a mom but dad helped too who cared about you was the one teacher who doesn't really care about you and 30 other students in class in many cases right some good ones in fairness i've met them i've, I've had them in my life but also a bunch of ones that don't really care right and so you know that's the system they replaced and people like the great charlotte iserby charlotte i-s-e-r-b-y-t charlotte iserby and others uh, John Taylor Gatto, John T A Y L O R G A T T O. Look up Charlotte Iserby and John Taylor Gatto, G A T T O. Right? They've looked into the school system, the thinking behind it, right? You know, and 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 they've they've they've, they've discovered that it was meant to turn us all into socialist slash communist zombies, right? It isn't meant to help us think; it's meant to help us conform. Right, that's what it is, and they've done extensive work on that. So it's not just man, school sucks. I don't like it, and uh, and, and and I'm not good at it, so I, I resent it. It's like no, no, no. There's real thinking behind questioning the system. And if you look into the interviews or the work of these people or the books by these people, you're like, oh, that's the intellectual architecture that went into planning this system, right? So, for example, before, um, before. Before uh, uh, the school systems, uh, kids were homeschooled, right? You were homeschooled in the basic reading, writing, arithmetic, plus typically a craft that your parents had and passed on to you. You were a shoemaker from a family of shoemakers. You were a farmer from a family of farmers, and they passed it on, right? But what happened is in the late 1800s, uh, the Prussians, sort of the predecessor to the Germans, right? The Prussians were, Prussia was where Germany is now and other countries near Germany, right? The Prussians were like, uh, we want to get more soldiers, but all these kids that are homeschooled don't really want to fight, you know, for us to go conquer those people and get more stuff for the king, right? So the Prussians in the late uh, 1800s came up with the first uh, institutional schooling, right? And the idea was to take these kids, get them obedient to the government and the system, and then turn them into soldiers so they could fight and go kill other people to get more stuff for the king right that's that's what school that's where schooling originally came from 140 years ago right and if you look as well at the results of homeschooled kids right homeschooled kids do much better right there are studies on this right there are studies on homeschooling homeschool kids do much better they don't get into premarital sex and drugs right they don't they don't get into they're they're much smarter right they they they, they get into top colleges they get into harvard yale mit right they're, they're much smarter they do much better than than other kids right and so you can look into that yourself plus um you might say with homeschool kids 
what about socialization? What about, you know, aren't you going to be alone? Don't you have to get used to get along with other kids? And there are some issues with that, in fairness. There are some issues. But a lot of times, you supplement the homeschooling with group activities with other kids, with sports, with music, with arts classes, with being part of the school play, with developing friendships through these organizations, and then hanging out with these other kids that go to school, right? But you are more encouraged, instead of having an atheistic, communistic view of the world, right? You are more encouraged to have strong moral fiber and character and take your stuff seriously and, and take, you know, so on. That's more encouraged. So there is a, a lot of value to homeschooling, especially today, right? Especially today where the schools are worse than ever. They're trying to destroy our past, right? Um, you know, saying everyone's racist, sexist, phobic, absolute garbage. I was here. You know, don't trust anyone under 30. You, you got to tell them what's going on, right? It's all garbage. We weren't a bunch of racist, sexist, phobics before, right? We go to Toronto Pride Parade, as I mentioned earlier, and, and you know, it's fine. Nobody cared. These people over there, people over here, nobody cared, right? Um, you know, as long as they're polite Canadians, nobody cared. They're polite Canadian. Who cares, right? People came here, wanted to be polite Canadians, assimilate with polite Canadian culture, be proud of it, right? You know, that, that people care, right? Um, and so they try to destroy our past and then say we have no future and then send, as I mentioned earlier, our commie zombie kids to kill us all because we had nice weather or we had nice stuff that made bad weather and that destroyed the earth, right? So that's what they're going to do as the new watermelon green communists, right? So now, and of course, with all the gender confusion and don't be good at being a boy or a girl, but if you want to do anything else, we'll encourage the hell out of you. But if you want to be good at being a boy or a girl, forget it. Those are stereotypes. But if you want to switch, then we're going to use all those stereotypes to help you switch. But if you don't want to switch, then we're going to say, screw all those stereotypes, they suck. So if you're like, stereotypes for boys, yes, this is what makes boys happy. This is what, oh, this is what makes girls happy. It's how they make each other happy. That's all garbage. But if you want to switch, then oh my goodness, here you little boy, you want to be a girl, here's girly things. You want to be a boy, you want to be a girl, you want to be a boy, here it is, climb a tree, scrape your knee. That's not an OG, come on, man. You know, like whatever, right? So it's all to screw us up, to make us easier to control, because when everyone's a mess, and everyone's a mess messing with each other, then we're too much of a mess messing with each other to stop being messed with by other people, right? And when we see each other as the enemy, right, then, then that's the problem, right? Also part of the commie zombie apocalypse that they're, they're engineering, as you can see. Um, so that's a bit on, on schooling and education from, uh, from Mr. West, just to back up some of what he's saying. So it's not just, ah, oh, you're crazy, and blah, 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 blah. Right? And next is uh, from the Forbes article on Black History Month. Kanye says, oh, one other thing, Black History Month. This is torture porn. Because when that comes up, what do we see? Or what we do is we see, and by the way, if I get that vibe, that's the process. And we are going to be, we are going to a beautiful, uplifting, fun, creative process as people as America collectively, and show the world how great we are. So here we go. Black History Month, every year they got to remind us about the fact that we couldn't vote. They meaning white supremacy construct. And I said that with the CT at the end. I knew what I was talking about. Our minds are so much more infinite than what's coming across TikTok or Instagram, what's trying to influence our children and the next generation of who we are. You might think, okay, Kanye, that's a pretty rambling, crazy answer to Black History Month. But that's why I'm saying Kanye West versus COVIDiocracy and the zombie apocalypse. You know, I'm, I'm going to say, well, he must have heard something to have these thoughts. So what did he possibly hear, right? And so what I'll say is when he says Black History Month, this is torture porn, um, you know, what he means is they try and torture you in the trauma of slavery it's trauma-based mind control. They often do this. They MK Ultra program through the CIA at McGill University, Dr. Jolly and West, you know, whatever. They took a bunch of people. They gave them drugs and tortured them and electroshocked them. And, you know, they break you down or they, they, they abuse, torture kids, create split personalities. You got Sybil, the book Sybil, right, where you abuse, torture. And you're like, ah, little Johnny doesn't want this child abuse. Maybe I'll switch to Jamie. It's another personality or Joey, whatever, right? They create alternate personalities, right? And so with trauma-based mind control, when you traumatize people, you control their minds, right? And you know, part of the COVID, you know, shutdown, lockdown, nonsense, the mandated masks and vaccines and tracked and searched and drugged and chipped, microchips and all this crap, 
right? You know, all this stuff, there's a lot of trauma-based mind control out there to make people easier to control, right? And so <clears throat> when it comes to Black History Month specifically, what they try and do is they try and say, slavery, really, really bad, slavery, really, really bad, black people feel really, really bad, you know how it is, 400 years, nothing's changed. It's like, no, 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 bullshit, 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 right? You can do great. You can do great. You can do great in, in, in the working world, in corporate America, America, in sports, in entertainment, in music, in school, right? People have not been racist uh, for at least 40 years, since the 80s. I know for sure, I was around, right? Probably since the 70s, 60s maybe, there was still some, but not not since the 80s, so not for the last 40 years at least, right? But they're trying to keep get you to keep reliving that trauma. Plus, they don't say about slavery that it was like, like two, three percent of people owned slaves. It wasn't like every white person, like, you know, three, four years ago, was like, you know, yeah, that's it. We're all we're all slave owners. We all have big plantations and black people picking cotton. It's like no, it was like like you know, two three percent. You know, something like that. Three percent. You know, of people in the south. You know, whatever. You know, two three five percent. There was still some racism here and there, or whatever. But you know, it wasn't like people were treated great. But in terms of actual slave owners, it was a tiny fraction of uh, of of white people who owned slaves, right? And it was a bunch of white people who freed the slaves. A bunch of white people who freed the slaves. A bunch of white Christians fought wars. They were like, this is wrong, right? Now, they, they, they sympathized with the slaves. We're all God's children, right? And, 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 and Jesus wouldn't like this, right? And they freed the slaves. A bunch of white people fought and died to free the slaves, right? British Empire paid to free the slaves. A bunch of Christians said, you have to do this. This is wrong. Jesus wouldn't like this, right? The Christian ethic that built up the culture, the moral fiber, good people, respect each other, communicate well, teach kids to, can, 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 can build up good, healthy cultures and so on, right? They freed the slaves. The British Empire did it. Canadians helped. We had the Underground Railroad up to Nova Scotia. A bunch of Americans helped in the North. The North fought a war with the South. Now, there's a number of reasons for the Civil War, right? Slavery was one part of it, but so was keeping the Union together, not dividing the Union. Right? So there was other factors involved, right? But slavery was a key part of it. So the fact is, they want to say that that history is something you shouldn't know, right? And they want to say that you've got to relive it today. You know, you've got to walk around as a black person going, no, no, this is terrible. We're still suffering. We're miserable. And it's like, no, no, no. And they want to say, white people, you should all feel guilty. You own slaves. You listen to that. No, no, no. Right? That's garbage. Right? If you're a black person in America, you can go from homeless to a basketball player that recently signed a $140 million contract to play for the Miami Heat, like Jimmy Butler. Right? And he had a $100 million contract before that, and a $10 million contract, he's made $250 million bucks. Right? At the age of 12, 13, he was acting crazy, mom didn't like it, kicked him out, and then he spent a couple of years homeless, but got good at basketball, made his way to the NBA, now he's worth $200 million, right? No one stopped him, right? And, you know, so many of our favorite people. Now, that being said, it's all about respect. It's about people who respect each other, you know? If you're gonna move like a thug, white, black, or anything else, and you're gonna mess with people, then people don't like you. Or if you're gonna mess with people, period, people don't like you, right? So that's the difference, right? But otherwise, no, that's all bullshit trauma porn, right? And there are people that make money off that. As I said earlier, rich guy foundations fund a lot of activism designed to destabilize us, right? You know, you know, like I say in my song, Who Shot You? Capital WHO, World Health Organization. 50 years of charity made problems worse. Ask the third world, who shot you first? For you and your kids cursed, responsible for what you're worth, right? Um, that's why, right? So they don't fund the, the, ch the charities that are meant to bring us together and, and, and help us unite and understand and take them out. They fund the ones that are meant to divide and conquer and control us, weaken us to accept socialism, communism, controlled by a handful of super rich evil people, right? So that's the difference.
you know, that's why I went to a rally in Toronto years ago. There was like 200 organizations there working to fight, working to fight poverty in the city. Where are they? You don't see them. You know, the, the leaders are getting $100,000 a year. Not to do much, say much, maybe talk to the government once in a while about getting more stuff, right? The, 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 the foot soldiers are making 35, 50,000 a year, right? That's all. Talk to the government about this. They want more and more affordable housing, affordable housing, more government boxes, as opposed to, no, no, make conditions where people can bring themselves up and buy their own nice house. Don't just create more government boxes to put them in that, you know, are, are shitholes, you know, that's, but that's what they push for. More taxes, more government control, blah, blah, blah. Right? Then he says, we're going to a beautiful, uplifting, fun, creative process as people as America collectively and show the world how great we are. That's partly because, as I said earlier, the globalists are trying to replace America as the standard for the world. Not perfect. Not a lot of stuff with CIA and other, you know, crap institutions. Every government sucks, right? But the ideals are great. Guaranteed individual rights, right to free speech, First Amendment, Second Amendment, right against unreasonable search and seizure, given to you by God, guaranteed by the government and the goodwill of the people. Someone fucks around, remove them, get a new government. It's your right to do that. They want to replace that with the communist system built up China since the 70s, most favored nation status. Don't worry about pollution, slave labor, none of that. You poor Chinese people, you know, we gave you communism and you're all starving to death, so we'll bring you up this way. And then they take the system that enslaved a billion people there and roll it out to the rest of the world, the other seven billion, that's what they're doing now as part of this COVID lockdown, right? They want to take the, the way that the China deals with things and make it worldwide. Under the UN, WHO, as a sort of, they're the global government, but they're using China as their muscle. Before, they used America as their muscle, but America still had ideals that the whole world could relate to, and they all wanted those. We want guaranteed rights. We want equal opportunity. We want equality of justice under the law. We don't want equality of outcome, all the same commie zombie, um, you know. And, um, and then you could bring the third world up to first world standards. Say, no, 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 you can have these rights and freedoms and opportunities and prosperity. Instead, they want to take us all down to third world standards, except for the rich people, because we had it too good, we had nice stuff, that made bad weather, that destroyed the earth, so, you know, enough of you people, right? So, and part of the zombie zombiosis process is to make sure nobody can say or do anything about that.